Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of Important Work. I'm your host, Chris Angel, as always, and I'm here with my guest today, Sean Smith. Sean Smith, hello. Hello, man. I can't. I can't uh, wait to get into this. Uh, I, know, I dude, love. I know. You know, I love who you are and what you're about. So thank you. Let's co-create some good stuff. Uh, I know. You know, it's funny uh, about social media. I think a lot of times we can poo-poo social media, like, oh yeah, everybody's post posting their perfect life. But dude, the thing is, like, how you and I found each other. Somehow, I posted something about marketing and authenticity in marketing or transparency in marketing, and then you had a conversation with me. Like, you reached out and said something to me in a private message, I think, and then we started a conversation. And I think that's a perfect segue into this conversation because we're talking about trust and transparency is the new currency. And I think so many people are using social media in a way that is like puffing and, and, and posturing and trying yep. to do the stuff they think they're supposed to do and are terrified of actually being a real human in social media. But dude, the place where people actually will engage with you and actually have a real conversation with you and trust you is when you start being a real human in social media. So that, that's how I'm kicking it off, Sean. What do you I say? I love it. What say yeah. you? I, I, I totally agree with what you say. I think people have these rules of, of what perfection is supposed to be like, yes. what it's supposed to look like, what business is supposed to look like, what leadership is supposed yep. to look like. I think we are, uh, we're, we're missing our human experience to a large degree. I think, we are trying to find the rules yeah. that apply to certain situations, whether it's parenting or relationships or social media or whatever. And I don't believe in rules. You know, I think there are laws, not rules. And I think one of the laws that is pertinent to this conversation is what creates trust, yeah. what creates connection yep. and the presence on social media or the prettiness of the pictures or the cuteness of the quotes that could appeal to people's intellect, right? That could fulfill people's desire to want to engage or like or, or pass on, but that does not create connection. Right. And right. what really creates connection is your word. And I think when we first talked, I think one of the, the first messages, it might be interesting to go back and, <laughs> and uh, confirm this. I think I said, I don't believe I've heard anybody use the word humanity mm, as it right. relates to marketing. That's right. Other than me, right? Because yeah. humanity is where that connection is. Yeah. And so you kind of provided for me some confirmation, like, man, there's somebody else out there that believes yeah. uh, with conviction yeah. that this stuff is true. And the cool thing about all this, yeah. Chris, is it doesn't take effort to be real. It just takes right. guts. Yeah. It just takes permission. And I think what a lot of people are afraid of is if I'm real with you, mm -hmm. you're going to leave me, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's our primal fears of abandonment, yeah. our primal fears of not being good enough. So if I'm real with you, if I, if I share with you that I'm not perfect, mm -hmm. if I share with you that I have fears, that I have addictions, that I have behaviors I'm not proud of, that I have shame, that I have mistakes yeah. in the background, if I sh essentially share with you that I'm just like you yeah. and, and I'm a human walking this planet, then I'll lose your favor, I'll lose your approval, I'll lose your potential business. Mm -hmm. And so we try to cover all that stuff up. And what I think we don't understand is the thing that we're afraid is going to repel you is the actual thing that's going to connect you yep. at such a deep level that I couldn't pry you off if I wanted to, right? right? Like right. that kind of connection at the human level is everything. We're just afraid of it. Yeah, dude. Okay. I want to go unpack that in just a second. So, so let me say what I want to unpack and then I want to actually just get your backstory for a second. So what I yeah. want to unpack with you though, is, um, cause I'm in total agreement. How do we get to that place of transparency? What are the things that prevent us from being transparent? Like I want to unpack some of that. Cause I know that you're, you're a life coach. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Give me some of the backstory. Like what do you do professionally? Cause I, I think this adds some color to our conversation, right? Cause you get to deal with people's stuff. As a life coach. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I got into this about 15 years ago. I had my own, you know, breakthrough experience. We use that word carelessly, yeah. I think, but, sure. uh, but, but it fundamentally changed my life. And my wife said, what happened to you? I don't recognize you and you're smiling a bunch. And, hmm. and I just got addicted to these things that I was learning about myself. And hmm. I started to connect a lot of dots. Yeah. I could never figure out why I seemed to underperform according to my talent and skills and work ethic. Mm. And I had this massive mm. shift. And so I wanted to just teach some of these things I was learning about myself. Mm. And I never really intended to be a coach. I never intended necessarily to have a business. 
I just wanted to start speaking. And in my ignorant desire to speak and share some of these things that I was talking about, somebody asked me if they could hire me to be a coach. We're like, well, I guess I'm a coach now, right? <laughs> so, you know, I went out and got certifications and stuff like that. But um, I've been, I was drawn immediately after that into the world of Mary Kay Cosmetics. Hmm. And I've been coaching primarily women for the last 14 years. Wow. Never, I used to joke with a lot of my friends, like if one of my college buddies would have said, I have this premonition for you. I see you with pink websites and pink ties and, you know, <laughs> teaching Mary Kay ladies right. how to sell more makeup. Like I would have punched them right in the face, right? <laughs> that would have been so offensive to my macho ego. I'm not right, 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 yeah. But I fell That's in funny. love with the passion mm. that these humans had. It didn't matter that these humans were women and it didn't matter that they were selling something that I wasn't personally interested in or had any familiarity with. I was drawn to the desire to be a better human, mm. to the desire to, to go after goals. And so mm. I ended up creating a whole brand in that world. I mean, to this day, I'm the pink caddy coach, right? Ah, nice. Uh, in, in the Mary Kay world. And it was awesome for a long, long time. It still is awesome. But after a, a period of time, um, you know, I just started to get into speaking and started to get into helping coaches build their business and so forth. But the foundation of all of this, which is, I'm glad you asked the question, was really about my confrontation with my own femininity. Hmm. I think that's why I was like divinely appointed to these hmm. Mary Kay ladies. Right. And wow. I've been a sensitive guy for a long, long time. At the same time, I was trying to overcompensate with that sensitivity with pretending I was tough and all this right, stuff, right. you know, well beyond my actual sense of security. Hmm. And I, I needed to really understand what was going on, you know, through these other people, but also how it applies to me. Hmm. And, um, and, and another divine intention there, Chris, was that I needed to heal my relationship with my own mom. Mm. who uh, passed away about six years ago. But prior to that, a few years before that, I was able to have this amazing conversation that healed my relationship with her mm. um, after you know, a 25-year verbally abusive uh, relationship. Only, only one way, me to her, not her to me at all. Mm. And so I, was, I had a ton of shame. Mm. I had all kinds of this pain inside of me that I didn't know what to do with. And so this journey that I wouldn't have chosen, but it w was perfect for me, hmm. really helped me heal a lot of my own internal yeah. uh, conflicts. And then I, you know, just like everything, I start teaching about the stuff that I'm learning and the stuff that, yeah. that is shifting for me. Right. And then when I got into this world of coaching, hmm. I figured, you know, all these, all these concepts that I've been teaching these Mary Kay ladies, like that's great for the Mary Kay ladies, but that doesn't really fit for the men or that doesn't fit for for people who want to be coaches. I mean, they got all their stuff together, right? So I thought that, that all these concepts were just contextual in, in, in the, the female entrepreneur scenario. And what I found is, of course, we're all humans, right? We all have the same fears. Yeah. We're afraid of rejection. We're afraid of abandonment. We're afraid of not being loved. We're afraid of all these things. And whether we've decided to be in the corporate world or we decided to be a life coach or whether we decided to be a speaker or, or, or none of them, we still have yeah. all of those human yeah. fears. So it's the human that is applied to all these different roads. And so I would say now that I'm so much more, uh, I've got a lot more traction in the, in the coaching world, so to speak, like you know, marketing for, for coaches and helping coaches build a business. I would say what I'm best at is helping coaches with that inner game. Because that's what I've been dealing with my whole life. Now it's just another application of... Right you know, people who are afraid of visibility and yet they're trying to build a visible platform, right? People are yeah. afraid of rejection and yet they're trying to create a Facebook ads funnel with money on the line and all these mm -hmm. things that, that really cause conflict. It's the inner game that's going to decide whether we win or lose in every aspect of life. Yeah. And that's what I'm most passionate about now. I feel like, that's so good, man. I love, I, I feel like the I mean, that's ultimately what this show is about. I, I believe everybody inside of them, um, I, I used to say it like this, has a dream that's embedded in their soul, right? For some people, it's embedded yeah. deep and they haven't accessed it, but it's there. And other people have seen it, they've played with it, they've toyed with it, but they haven't unlocked it. 
And then some people, yeah. like they have, they're like, okay, I got it, but it needs legs. I need it to get momentum. But regardless of what stage you're at in that, in that, that dream, I now call it important work. But you have important work. You have a contribution to make. And, and you are at some stage in revealing and uncovering that contribution. And I feel like the, the, in order for that contribution to get legs, you as a human have to get comfortable with your humanity because until yeah. that, everything else is going to be fronting, posturing. Nobody's ever going to get a real, listen, your, your ability to uh, be human gives others permission to be human. And until that, everybody's going to play this game of trying to be perfect, you know? That's everything. We, we need to give, in a business sense, we need to give our prospects and our, and our clients an experience of themselves mm. through us. Right. Right. I think the same is, is, is the case, especially speaking, right? When I mm. teach speakers how to be, how to be uh, good on stage, it's, mm -hmm. you have to have the guts to mm. be a human on stage and let people experience their humanity through yours. Right. Yes. And if we have the guts to drop the guard, to drop the armor and say, this is my yep. humanity, not only is that the best way for people to experience themselves, they can't deny it. They can't avoid it unless they get up and run away. And some people right. might do that. Right. But it's such an energetic pull. It's like this, this mm -hmm. black hole kind of energy. If, if I go deep into myself, yeah. I will pull you with me. Yep. Because at our deepest core, I believe we're the same. I believe that, mm -hmm. that we all have like this, this, this same uh, Mad Libs story. Remember the Mad Libs where yeah. you, you give me a noun or give me a verb? Right. Yeah. Like I think we all have the same Mad Libs story about mm -hmm. human, about our humanity, mm -hmm. but our details are different. So you grew up in Washington. I grew up in California. Other people grew up in Africa. Other people grew up as women. And, and we, we change the details out, right? Like what's your biggest pain? What's your biggest fear? What's your biggest goal? Mm -hmm. But essentially we have the same human story. And if we have the guts to tap into the human story yeah. under all the details, then the kind of connection that we can create <laughs> is ridiculous. And what you, what you said, I love, I would say my label for everything that you're talking about is what I call the soul's obligation. Mm. We have an obligation at our soul level mm. to produce whatever work we have coded inside our DNA, like you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. And if you don't, fulfill your soul's obligation. You can make all the money in the world you want. You can have the six pack abs and you can weigh whatever you want. You can live wherever you want. You will not be fully fulfilled mm -hmm. until your soul is happy. And I think your soul can only be happy yeah. by singing that song that's uniquely ours to sing. It doesn't even matter if anybody buys the record. We right. need right. to sing it for ourselves. That's right. And that's what I love about you. And you give people permission to do that. And then we can actually market that. Right. Right. It's, it's not an yeah. either or scenario. We can actually market that. But when it's fueled by our soul yeah. instead of our ego, yeah. there's, there's a different level of connection we have to it, to ourselves. Yeah. And there's a different yeah. level of connection we magnetize in yeah. other people. I did this. Um, I did this. Facebook Live a couple weeks ago now, maybe it was a month, whatever, it was a while back. And I, I just, I was talking about the important for us to, the, the importance for us to rise um, as not just entrepreneurs, but as humanity, as people, like it's time to rise. Yeah. Your, your, your goals depend on it. Your family depends on it. You and your soul depend on it, but we have to rise. And the thing that gets in the way of us rising is perfection. Like we think there's a certain way to do it, a perfect way to do it. And, and, we know ourselves. We've collected all sorts of evidence and data that we're not perfect. And so when we look at the vision of what we think it's supposed to look like and we compare it to the evidence we've collected about ourselves, we can see there's a gap between what's perfect yeah. and where we are. And I said, the, the answer to perfection, the way through and past this, this gate or this, this obstacle of perfection is purpose. Once you mm. have purpose, it doesn't matter if it's perfect because the, the, the goal of purpose isn't perfection. The goal of purpose is to share what's in your soul to say. And so yeah. now you share through social media, not because it has to be perfect and look a certain way. You share it because it's what it's in your soul to say. You know? Mm, I love that. Yeah. The, goal is, the, the goal is not perfection. The goal is expression. Mm, yeah, um, that's right. Of your purpose. That's I love it. Yeah, yeah. 
Because that is so, it, it changes the rules of the game, right? right? When the goal is perfection, especially in the world of online marketing and social media, then other people get to validate us, yeah. right? And yeah. if we don't get the likes, if we don't get yes. the business, if we don't get whatever that external approval yes. is, then that therefore means we're not perfect. Yep. But when the goal is just expression, yep. then us singing our song is the win and the, win. the leap of faith is that's actually going to produce right. 10 times more right. business <laughs> that's the leap of faith right. if our ego could could get around yeah. that right so good and on top of that what i so i think in the absence of purpose all you're left with is the perfection game like if you don't have oh. a sense of yourself if you don't have a, if you don't if you haven't looked at the dream embedded in your soul this is why i love life coaching because if you haven't and this is what you do if you haven't looked at who you are how you're wired what what the clues are to your soul's work, then all you're left with is perfection. And when you're left with perfection, now you, 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 that's an impossible game. But if you could tap into purpose, you start to have space to create, self, space to express that purpose. And that is the game. I believe the game of life, once you uncover purpose, is iteration. It's just iteration, 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 iteration. And that's why that's what I love about marketing is marketing is a game of iteration. It's not a game yeah. of perfection. And most people think it is a game of perfection because they haven't tapped in to purpose. That's everything, man. And, and, Come on. and along with perfection is, is the assessment of what's right. Yes. We have such a fear <laughs> yeah. of doing what's wrong. Yeah. Right, right as though yeah. there's such a thing. And right. as you were talking, I, I just kind of like dropped into my body even a little bit more because people that are chasing perfection, I think are missing the point of being a human. Mm. You know, we intellectually know that nobody's perfect and, and we say that we're not actually seeking perfection, but mm. in our actions, most of us are. And I know I still do at times when I'm, you know, trying to avoid doing the wrong thing because that means I'm going to make a mistake and that means right. it's going to lead to whatever consequences there are, but I firmly believe that the most sacred experience on this journey, that, that we all have the, the fortune of, of living above ground, uh, is experience ourself, experiencing our humanity. Mm. And, and what perfection does is it pulls us away from our humanity. Yep. It pulls us away from who we truly are to try to get to where we think we want to be, which is what you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. And anything that pulls us away from ourself pulls us away from the point of life. Mm -hmm. It pulls us away from this sacred knowingness of ourselves. You know, I've, I've started to say this just recently as, as I'm realizing this for myself, the most beautiful experience we can have is to know our own voice, to really know our own heart, you know, to reintroduce or to be reintroduced to ourselves. And that's what all this perfectionism and all the ego and all the intellectual guidelines and all the rules and all those things are designed to keep us away from. Yeah. And if you don't live the sacred life, if you, don't, if you don't have value in those sacred experiences and all of our messes and all of the imperfections, mm -hmm. then you really can only live the scared life, right? And those two yeah. words are, are the same letters, just, mm -hmm. just two letters flipped. <laughs> yeah, so you go from scared according to the intellect to sacred according to the intuition, according to the heart. Mm -hmm. And that's enough, right? Yeah. I think yeah. we, we all just got to get to the point where me being me yeah. on, on full volume, is enough yeah. and if it wasn't enough then i wouldn't be this right? right we all have our own puzzle piece to bring to the party absolutely i think there's a i love this so there's a there's a um there is a path there has to be there has to be action i mean you could listen to this and and pick up what sean and i are saying but then there has to be a path into action around expression you have to start to express because if you don't express then what happens is you you collect all sorts of insights about life and truth and revelation and you sit back here but you never express then what you end up doing is holding on to revelation while while thinking the game is about perfection you're like mm -hmm. right like you're amassing insights but you're not doing anything with those in the world and be, probably because of fear and and totally. this thing of like uh but but if i if i say what i if i say something about what i received what I saw, what I, what I intuited. Somebody's going to judge me. Somebody's going to criticize me. Somebody, and now we're back into the game of perfection. So totally. here's my question. How do we, 
how, I mean, I have my own thoughts, but I want to know your thoughts. How yeah. do we begin to express? How do we, with, it's going to be scary for some, right? But how, yeah. do, how do I be transparent without, I, I don't want to puff. I don't want to promote and, and continue to um, uh, foster this puffing and, and, and perfection. What I want is for people to begin to, to be transparent. So how do we start that? How do we, how do, we do that? I think for me, it's a simple shift. It's not easy for most people, but the distinction is simple. Mm. And the distinction is service versus sales. Mm. And sales could be actual yeah, money transactions or just yeah. I'm selling a, an opinion to get your approval, right? It's right, the right. energy of mm. internal validation versus external validation. And the thing with sales of any kind mm. is if I'm trying to sell you something, that means I have an expected return. Hmm. whether it's a like for hmm. you to push or money for you to give or whatever your role hmm. is in that. If right. you don't complete the transaction, hmm. then the transaction was a failure. Then the expression was a failure. Whatever I did was a failure. If you don't reciprocate, whatever my expectation is. Hmm. And what that means then is hmm. if I have something to gain in the form of your validation of any kind, then I also have something to lose. Hmm. That's where all of our fears are. All of our fears are in the loss yeah. of something. And usually it's the loss of things that we don't have, right? If I, yeah. if I get on Facebook and I do a video and you don't like the video, I'm afraid of losing your approval. I never had your approval, right? <laughs> yeah. But, but we, we hold on to it as though yeah. we have, like anything that's up at risk is our possession. Mm. And we hate losing our possessions. But when you shift into service, what I always say is service doesn't have an evil twin. Hmm. The evil twin of personal gain is personal loss. That's where all of our fears live. There is no evil twin when I really truly just show up to serve. Hmm. And if I show up to serve you in whatever way and you don't take me up on that or how dare you, you actually give your opinion of my service. <laughs> if I'm truly coming from a place of service, it will not trigger my fears of loss. Mm. So that's how we can check in yeah. on whether we're doing it with this reciprocal nature mm. or whether we're truly doing it to serve. And here's the thing, mm. as you said, it is scary for most of us to share our soul's obligation to share. I forget yeah. the, the phrase that you used. Um, how important did you call work, it? What important work? The important work. Yeah. It, it's, it's scary for us yeah. to, to put that out there. Cause that's yeah. our most vulnerable essence of mm. value. Mm. And when we put it on the table, somebody might not like it. Right. So yeah. it's, it's terrifying at a soul level to be vulnerable. And then somebody say, I don't like you or right. I'm leaving right. you or, or, or whatever the ne negativity is. Yeah, yeah. And because that's scary, number one, I have to do whatever I got to do yeah. to heal whatever traumas or wounds or fears or whatever I've got yeah. going on so that I have the willingness mm. to turn the light on and make visible my vulnerability. Do you listen to shows like this and think, I could totally do that? You have a longing to connect more genuinely with your community and have a platform where you can play a bigger game. But you never start because either the tech's overwhelming or you don't want more work on your plate, or maybe you're not exactly sure what you would say. Yet you know you have really important things to share. This is why we created a done-for-you content marketing service, helping you give life to the conversations in your head to grow your business and your impact. Learn more at mygroundswell.com. The second part of that is if I get vulnerable with you, that's going to trigger your relationship to your vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like your own vulnerability, then what your ego will do is turn the light off that just exposed it. In this case, that's me. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't like yeah. your own vulnerability, it'll be much easier for you to attack mine. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Then it will for you to look at yours. Mm -hmm. And so when we play this vulnerable work, what we have to do is, is really understand this human relationship to the essence of vulnerability and then to our yeah. own vulnerabilities. And if I piss you off, yeah. what, what just happened is you didn't like your experience of yourself mm. through me. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't mean I need to change. 
Yeah. You know, one of my clients recently said, what if I've actually been doing the right thing? I've just been serving it to the wrong people. Right. Yeah. And that's a yeah. fundamentally different question. So what if what I'm doing is right, but the people who are afraid of their vulnerability will not like me having a mic in front of my face. Right. But there will be other people that yeah. do. And regardless of their response to me, as you said earlier, I need to speak from my own expression. These ears yeah. need to hear this voice coming out of the mouth and going into the ears. Yeah, because yeah. we hear it differently than just inside of our head. And I, from a marketing standpoint, your message cannot evolve in your head. It can only evolve with oxygen, mm. right? It's got to get out. We got to yeah. get the feedback. We got to see how it felt when we said that thing. We got to see how other people responded when we said that thing. Yeah. And so we've got to, going back to your question, we've got to heal our own relationship to our vulnerability such that when people respond to us, because they will, the more vulnerable we get, the more we'll piss people off, mm. right? Boldness polarizes people. Mm. That's mm. not a reason to shut up. That's just a reason to, to discern your audience a little bit better, right? Right, right, right. These people are just simply saying, hey, I'm not for you. You're not for me. And from a marketing standpoint, one of the, the concepts that I teach is instead of identifying who our ideal clients is, you know, who are the people that we want to go after? I want to identify my seeker. I want to identify the person that's seeking me. Mm -hmm. There's somebody out there that's been assigned to me. Mm -hmm. And if I don't speak, they can't find me. Yeah. And I believe that each that's and every right. one of us that has a message has a voice that is uniquely assigned to a single person out there who's foaming at the mouth, waiting mm -hmm. to hear our podcast, yeah. waiting to watch our video, waiting to yeah. read our article, nobody else is going to touch them because we've been assigned to them. Right. And when you think of it that way, Chris, now this really truly is a service mentality yeah. because somebody's out there raising their hand going, Hey, can I get a little help here? And it's yeah. a lot easier yeah. for us to go. Yes, I will help you. than it is for us to go. I'm going to assign myself to these people, put a target on them and, and shoot for them. It feels like we're chasing, right. which gets us into right. that other sales mode. Right. Yeah. So good. So, so if we make this really practical, right? Like, um, in content marketing, in marketing, when you're thinking about coming from service and not selling, because so many people are selling through their marketing. But if you could switch that, flip that to service, and the way we're going to serve people is through transparency, because that's what creates the connection. That's actually what's going to have you benefit from your marketing is that people feel safe with you. They're able to like consume all of your videos and your content and your stuff and feel like they get to know you. And from that place is where they'll reach out to you. But to yep. get there, you've got to start... Um, speaking you've got to start sh and not speaking from i have i have it all figured out but sharing but speaking right. from a place of this is what i've learned and i think if you could do that that little that simple little shift of not i have it all figured out because i think that mm -hmm. if you do that then we start to bump into imposter syndrome we start to feel like i know that i I'm, i don't have it all figured out but i feel like yeah. that's what i'm supposed to say if you come from listen I, I did the, in fact uh, i've said this multiple times now but i did a series in december november on unhappiness I did, it was like a six part series. And I was just like, I was in the middle of being unhappy. I was just like, dude, I think I just saw something for myself that for decades I've been unhappy, right? Not to say like there aren't moments where like I have happiness, like I haven't yeah. just been hiding in a hole, but, but that my happiness has been circumstantial. And in my early life, uh, in my early 20s, happiness was just my condition. It was my default. And now yeah. happiness is, is not, right? I was like, that's interesting. So, and, and I just shared it from a place of like, not like a victim. So like when you go to share with the world from transparency, it's not that you're sharing from a place of being a victim. Yeah. You're sharing from a place of like, I noticed something. And isn't yeah. this interesting what I noticed? Because that is what actually sets people free to look at their own life for what, what they're learning and not have, to ha not have to have it all figured out. Mm. Do you add on to that for me. Like, do you have, do you have other practical ways that people can share in a way that feels like they haven't lost total control and they're not sharing from a place of being a victim, but like, how do people share? Yeah. I, I think the distinction you made is, is perfect. And so it's not, this is what I know, but this is what I notice mm. and, and not what I am here to teach you, but yeah. what I've learned. Yeah. 
And so the teaching and the knowing and the promoting is a byproduct of expressing your human journey and what you're noticing about yourself and, and what you've learned. So conceptually, I think that's brilliant. And from a practical standpoint, we can just start using those words because words are so powerful. Right, right. So if we were to write an article, here's what I know about relationships, mm -hmm. that's going to tap into ego and, and open ourselves up to attack about how stupid we are, which is one of our core fears for most right. of us. Right. But this is what I've learned about relationships in my 10 years, 20 years. I just uh, celebrated 20 years in my marriage. So yeah. I got a lot to say about what I've learned. Mm. Um, so uh, tactically, just changing the language will shift where we're coming from. Yes. And nobody uh, can say you didn't learn that, right? Nobody can say like, you didn't learn that. Like all your haters and all your trolls, what do they have to say to that? Like, you didn't learn that. You know, you know like, that's the... Yeah. That's the essence of clean communication. Mm. It, if if mm. I own my experience and I yes. say, you know, Chris, yes. my experience of you is this, mm -hmm. you can't deny that that's my experience. If right. I say, you know what, Chris, you do this too much. You, you talk too much. You don't mm. talk enough. You don't look yeah. the right way or whatever. Like if, if I put my assessment onto you as a fact right. and, and as somewhat of an attack, mm. then you have to defend it, right? Right. But if I say my experience is this or what I've learned about videos or podcasts or marketing or relationships, whatever, then it can be different than you, but I never put it on you yeah. and I never positioned it as a universal truth. It's just, here's what I've learned. So that little piece that you just said is brilliant because now you're, you actually will, even though I said earlier, the more bold you, you are, the more polarizing you'll get, right, right. but the more that we own our own experience of the world, yeah. the less people can get triggered yeah. because we're not making assessments of them. We're not saying this is what you have to yeah. do in a marriage. This is what I've learned to do in a marriage where I'm happier yeah. rather than, you know, being right all the time. So, so I want to give yeah. one thing, yeah. um, going back to this practical piece. Yeah. One of the things that I think is so critical for us in the idea of knowing ourself plus the practicality of marketing mm -hmm. is I assign my students to write an about me story, the real story. Hmm. Not let me impress you by what college I graduated hmm. from, what certifications I hold, and how many balls I can juggle at hmm. the same time. Yeah. It's let me tell you the real human story, right? Hmm. And that is the hmm. essence of transparency. Hmm. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to publish that story. It doesn't mean that we're going to publish everything because sometimes that's it's just not relevant right but getting it out what it causes us to do is look back into our past and go wow that human has been that human that i'm reading this story about has been through a ton of stuff hmm. that human has resilience that human has value that human can talk about their experiences as a child their experiences in a marriage their experiences in all of their human journeys and there's value there. A lot of us don't realize the value we have because we're trying to forward focus to this idea of perfection that you spoke about earlier. Right. We don't look back and actually see the value in our past. That's where our value comes from. It's in our past. And mm -hmm. so if, if we have the guts to actually look at ourselves yeah. and, and, and write the true about who this human is, not about who this performer is, but who this yeah. person is yep. underneath all the performance. It's amazing how that can get us to settle in. And then it's easier to do what you said. Right. Let me tell you what I've learned about, for me, almost dying when I was 13 years old, I got hit by a car. Let me tell you what I've learned about filing bankruptcy nine years ago, two years into my business. Let me tell you what I've learned about a 20 year marriage. Let me tell you what I've learned about burying my father and my mother inside of 14 years, uh, inside of 14 months of each other. Let me tell you what I've learned about having a sister that's 10 years older than me, seven miscarriages in between us. Let me tell you what I learned about like all these things. Yeah. All of a sudden it's going to draw us in and that's what a good story has. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Nobody wants to go to the movies and watch this this movie of zero conflict and everything always works out yet yeah, we yeah. think we're the only ones that should be that kind of character, right? Right, right. Yeah. That's where the value is. So if we have the guts to actually look into ourselves, yeah. then it's easier because we really truly will be settled in our own 
humanity, yeah. then it's easier to start sharing some of these yep. things and it'll come from the right place. And then it's not really effort. It's not about how do I say right. these certain things? It's just speak from your heart and then say it however you want. The energy is going to trump the language anyway. Right. I think too that, uh, you know, if you have, I believe that important work comes from the things that life has taught you. Like the very experiences you've had in life are there to serve your important work, right? Like um, that, so for you to get comfortable with your life experiences is important for you to live out your important work because they're one, they're, they're two sides of the same coin, right? Absolutely. So, so you have to start getting comfortable talking about what you've, what life has taught you. And by the way, life teaches you something every day. And I think our ability to, uh, be present to that, to tap into the lessons of life every day and then share what we learned is the thing that frees you in marketing right? Your, your important work in the world, side note, your income in the world, which can sometimes be connected, yep. requires that you share. You have to share. And the, and the only way that, uh, you said this earlier, but uh, before we hit record, I think, but you know, in, in a time when trust and transparency is the new currency, people are using transparency as a way to filter content. Like if you aren't transparent, I'm filtering you out. I don't trust you. In fact, you even, nope. I go, go ahead and see the thing about like corporations and business, businesses now that don't go transparent are going to be extinct. Like expand on that for just a second. Cause you, I, I agree with that. Yeah. I, I think this, this, the last 15 to 20 years of the internet has created a lot of excitement. You know, people jumped online in the last 10 years or so of social media and really the last I would say four to five years when social media marketing mm -hmm. has, has kind of uh, gone to the forefront. It, is, it has changed the way we interact yep. with the computer. It's changed the way we interact with information. It's changed the way we interact with people. And we've all on some level been taken advantage of. Mm. And so over the course of the last generation really of technology, it has caused the human mm. to distrust as a default. Yep. especially online. I yep. think we are guarded yep. first. Yep. You have to prove to me that I can put my guard down. Yes. Whereas once upon a time, it wasn't that way. If you could impress me, if you could look a certain way, if you could do the, the perfect videos, then your perfection would impress me. Now your perfection scares me. Now your perfection actually is suspicious. Suspicious, yeah, totally. Whereas, whereas your transparency makes me feel safe. It makes yeah. me feel comfortable. So this idea that trust and transparency is the, is the new currency, we literally are creating an, a, a, a new human brain mm -hmm. by the way that we interact with mm -hmm. our, our fellow humans online specifically. And it's not just online. I mean, this is, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's offline as well. But if, if you can get me to see myself through you, then I can trust right. that you're a real person. And right. what we're afraid of is being taken advantage of by fake people or fake schemes. Yep. So the way that you get me to feel your reality is to actually show me your transparency. Right. And I think we're moving toward a time where people will, as you said, not be interested any longer in anything that's not immediately transparent and real. Right. So you got corporations, you got coaches, you got a bunch of online businesses that are selling, selling, selling on the premise of making money, making money. And people are just getting tired of that stuff. They've built up a, a tolerance. People are, um, it, it's like defaults. As I said, we distrust. So people are guilty until proven innocent. And the cool thing about that, for those of us that have the guts to be real, our transparency will pierce the armor. Yep. That's designed to protect people from, you know, the bad right. guys, so to speak, or whatever the dangers are. Yeah. And once we can pierce that armor and once we actually connect in, in transparent humanity, mm -hmm. now what is available there right. is 10 times better than if I were to impress you with this headline that promises right. that you're going to make 10 times your return on whatever investment you got. Because now that yeah. humanity is, is, a dis, is, is distinct nowadays, right? It's sad that nowadays somebody goes, oh, wow, Chris, you're actually a real guy. 
You've <laughs> probably heard some version of that, right? Yeah, like, yeah. whoa, yeah. you're actually a real dude. Now that is the distinction that people celebrate. Right. Is right. people being real. So for right. those of us that have the guts to be real, yep. dude, how cool is that for our distinction? Amazing. All we have to do is be ourselves. So good. Gary, you, you, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, yep. you, okay. So he, you know, he would say marketers ruin everything, you know, like uh, they ruin email marketing, they ruin Facebook marketing they ru because they get there and then they just do, they check the box and they do the, the model, the formula, the thing. Right. And what's, but what's cool in is that you, you can't ruin authenticity. You can't ruin, oh. there can't be too much. Trans hey, everybody's on the bandwagon of transparency now. Well, if it's really transparent, if it's authentic transparency, People know, like, I think we, like, like you said, the internet's been around for what, 20, 30 years. We've had our honeymoon phase as a, yes. as a species with this information age and the internet. And now we're reverting back to our primal instincts. Yes. Of like, do I trust you? Do, can I, can I get a feel for you? Right. And it's no longer about the shiny things we see. That's why I love, by the way, shows like the reason I created that this marketing agency a year ago to create shows like this was because this format of me talking to you and you talking to me lets other people listening to this right now get a real sense for you and me like if you're listening to this this is who I am and this is who Sean is like this is it like you're getting a glimpse of who we are you know and, and, yeah and 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 people crave that yeah so yeah. I I, I want to highlight one thing you said yeah. I was talking with somebody recently I don't remember what the context was nor does it matter right now but we were talking about like what's the next what's the next thing what mm. what's you know five years ago the next thing was webinars right yeah 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 ten years ago the next thing was social media right right and then you've got different distinctions within social media so mm. live videos remember when live videos were a thing Remember yeah, yeah, when yeah. all you had to do was go live and people were like, oh my goodness, Chris is live. I can actually, he can, he can hear me. Hey, Chris, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> now people don't care because everybody's going live. So it's no longer novel. Mm -hmm. It's no longer, the platform itself is no longer exciting. And I don't know what the next technical thing is. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we, how we go from live interactive videos to the next step, unless you can find a way to get into my living Virtual room. VR, it's right? gonna be VR through goggles, sitting in a room, doing a webinar. That's, you know, there's probably a lot of truth to that, right? <laughs> but I do believe that the next thing is what you said. It's the transparent use of all of those things. Yes. So the technology is no longer gonna be the shiny new thing that people are drawn to. There won't be any more shiny new things that people are drawn to. Now they will only be drawn to humanity. Right. For those people that, that are interested in that, right? So for yeah. those of us that, that, you know, if that, that's our thing, if we want to yeah. draw in real people, then you do it with real magnets. Yep. And that's, that's exciting, actually, yeah. for yeah. people that are willing to know themselves, which is not only is it the way to be transparent as, as, as we've talked about and actually attract people, it's the way to, to, to be human, man. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, how many people go to their grave without ever knowing themselves mm -hmm. like that? Mm -hmm. Holy crap, dude. I, I could start crying inside 60 seconds. If I start thinking about that, right. I started thinking about my mom. I started thinking about my dad. Mm -hmm. I started thinking about all, all these people that I know that are doing everything they can to keep themselves away from themselves mm -hmm. for what? you know, so that right. they can go to the end of their, their life with no tears spilt on their shirt. That's not a win, right. right? That's to me, that's a loss. Yeah. You know, just make it through unemotionally scathed. Absolutely not. Mm. Yeah, man. Well, this is, I mean, this is the kind of work you do. Yeah. Like when people come to work with you as a life coach or even as a coach trying to figure out their own coaching stuff, like this is the kind of work that I would imagine rears its head, like pops up and then you get to kind of work them through that. Right. Yeah, pretty much everybody wants the, the, the funnel, right? They want the, the system. They want the <laughs> yeah. process, right? Right, if, right? If I just knew the system of how to market, right. give me the tool. I, I, yeah, give me the tool. And at some point in time, invariably, usually very fast, I go, listen, you're afraid of being visible. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the system that will give you more visibility is not only not going to work for you, it's the thing you're most deathly afraid of. Mm -hmm. So you learning the, the latest six-figure launch template right. is the thing that your heart is making sure you never implement because the last thing it wants is for you to have a camera on and the world looking at you. Why? 
because you don't like you looking at you. You don't like the reflection in the mirror. So the last thing you want is a, is, is a, a, a Truman show scenario where everybody's watching every aspect of you, you know? Yeah. So people are looking for the tools and they don't understand that without the foundational connection and knowing who we truly are, those tools won't, won't work. And in my industry, I am the product. I am a coach. I am the product. So I actually think it's not only irresponsible, but it's disrespectful for me to tell you that I know how to market your product when I don't know your product. Mm. Until I get to know who you are, mm. until I understand what you're about, until I understand what your important work is, yeah. where your sole obligation is, until I understand how you operate in the world, until I get a sense of what this package is, what this product is, and who's seeking that product, until I understand all of that, me telling you how to build a business is disrespectful mm. because life coaching is an individual game. We're dealing with an individual product called a human being that's helping individual human beings. And so we've got to get under these systems, these one size fits all, these turnkey approaches that unfortunately really appeal to the ego. They yeah. really appeal to the yeah. intellect, right? Because we want the the, the, the system that we don't have to put a whole lot of effort into it. And I'm the buzzkill that shows up and goes, <laughs> okay, listen, when you're done with all that crap, yeah. then come to me and we'll heal your relationship with yourself. Yeah. We'll take a look at what your product actually is. Mm -hmm. It's going to be way simpler than you think. It might be scary, but it's simple, I promise. Mm -hmm. And then we can take a look at a customizable approach. That doesn't mean that there aren't concepts and components that we can, you know, broadly uh, paint people right, with the right. same brush, like consistency and authenticity yeah. and videos and shows like you're talking about. Yeah, that's going to appeal. But until we know who the product is, what the product is, who the person is that's interested in this product, hmm. then and only then can we create something that is customizable. So I generally show up as the person that says, until you know who you are, until you heal your own fear of visibility, yeah. until you have the guts, you know, to, to, to have the body for this work. That's the language that, that, that I use a lot of times in our community. Listen, I'm going to paint this picture. This is what the, the future is going to look like. Everything that we talked about in order for us to be influential in the future, we got to be real. We got to be transparent. Yeah. Yep. We have to be so human. We got to have radical vulnerability. Mm. So suit up, man. Yep. Cape up. We yep. got to have the body for the work that you signed up for. Mm. If you don't want to do that work, fine. I'm not your guy. Right. But I want to create this almost like the Navy SEALs of humanity, right? Mm. We want to mm. have the body, mm. the, the courage, the, the guts, mm. because we've looked at ourselves. And if yeah. I am okay with myself and my imperfections and my humanity, I'm going to be completely fine with yours right. in my presence. Right. Yep. But if I don't have the guts... Like if I haven't taken myself down to basement floor number three where my mm. wounds are, yep. I can't take you down there. And right. you know that I can't take you down there. So you won't trust me to go down yeah. there. So but good. if we really want to play this, this game of healing uh, humanity, you know, we have to do it through transparency. The good thing is that's really the only tool needed yeah. is transparency. Transparency heals itself. Mm. We just yeah. have to have the guts to be transparent, hold the transparent space, if you want to play that game, that doesn't mean everybody needs to play that game. But that's the only game I personally am interested in playing yep. because of what it's done in my life. So if you sign up for that game, then you have to be equipped yeah. from an embodied standpoint to do that work. And that's what gets me fired up. Yeah, I love it. Well, that's the, again, this is the kind of work you do. Um, if people want to reach out to you, they want to connect with you about your coaching. Maybe they feel like you could really help them. Like how do people connect with you? Where do they go? It, yeah, everywhere online, I'm Coach Sean Smith, C O A C H S E A N uh, S M I T H. So that's who I am on Facebook, all social media handles. And my website is coachseansmith.com. So I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. Yeah. I, at this point at least, answer all of my messages. So if anybody has any questions or they, you know, just want to continue this conversation, disagree or agree <laughs> or what have you, yeah. I uh, am, am totally open for the communication. 
I love it. Dude, I could talk to you for a long time, I'm sure. Like, right? I feel like we're cut right? from the same cloth, you know, a tribe knows their own. So, uh, yeah, man, yeah. Thanks, for, thanks for hanging out with me on the show. And um, uh, you guys, check out Sean's uh, website, CoachSeanSith.com. Good stuff, man. I'll catch you later. Thanks for having me. And let's all do important work. Yeah. See ya. Do you have important work in the world? We can help you produce a show just like this one and get your message out in the world. Go to mygroundswell.com to connect with us now.